All right. Yeah, so let's go back to the fact that they can rescind this. Now that technology has changed and you're saying that things can happen within 10 minutes, you didn't email, Manning is on it, you all didn't send that offer back. The client can still rescind within this 10 minute time frame? If, if they can beat the game, if they can beat the clock. Now, I'm saying it can happen as quick as 10 minutes. You still have the situation of, I email you something. I mean, if you've got an email right at this moment, Shauna, you may not see it for two more hours because you're not gonna look in your email because you're doing something else. In that two hours, I could still rescind it. I'm saying it can happen as quick as, if I happen to be standing here on, you know, trolling Facebook and I see an email come in with an offer, I can literally go forward, David, and now he has it. And then David's doing the same thing. Oh, offer. Yeah, he signed, send it back. So it can happen in a matter of minutes. Yeah, if you decide you want to rescind, you go, hey, let's rescind. Oh, shit, it's already back. <laughs> All right. Once it's been accepted, and that means, and Cameron, this is what I was talking about. It's called the mailbox rule. Once I send it to you, it's deemed accept. It's deemed that you know it now. Mm -hmm. All right. Once I send it to you, it's deemed you know it. That's the mailbox rule the old attorneys use. The attorney's old rule. Once they put it in the mail, it's deemed received by you. So once the timestamp says 2.45 and you call me at 3 o'clock and go, hey, we're going to rescind this, uh, we've accepted it. Well, I haven't looked at my email. Doesn't matter. You got it at 2.45. That's accepted. Can I that's hold up in court, though? That's deliver acceptance of delivery. What? I said, can I, like, hold up in court, though? Just, like, just because... They sure. That's exactly what it was designed for. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Well, the, ex the, the acceptance of delivery could hold up in court. There could be other reasons that the judge throws that out uh, based on the way the contract was written or that. But the acceptance is definitely because that's what it was intended to do so that people can't go, well, I didn't read your acceptance, so therefore, doesn't matter. You received it, therefore it's now deemed accepted. You accepted the delivery and you are in fact your client. Like I said, if you get it at five, but your client doesn't see it till 6.30 because they're golfing, they still got it at five o'clock because you are the agent. Even if you don't look at it till 510, it's still considered delivered at five o'clock because it hit your inbox. This is one of the reasons why I like my agents to use my email, Ray, Raymond at themodulingroup.com because I have access to my server. I can go in and literally see when did we get it. Whereas if somebody uses Raymond at gmail.com, it's hard for me to actually get into Google's servers to see when something was delivered or accepted. And we actually have had this issue once before where I had to go into one of my agent's inbox and go to the server and see what time we actually got the property because they tried to rescind after we accepted. All right. So that so the offer has to have delivery and acceptance. And acceptance means both parties have to know that. So we're still here on page 190 dealing with consideration. Consideration, once again, has to be something of value. Because we sell at an arm's length transaction, that value is typically money. Remember the deed it said for $10 and other good and valuable services. So even if you give it away, it still has a value, some nominal value, because it has to fit this consideration uh, requirement to make it a legal contract. So even if you give it away, it's got a nominal value. Consent, both parties must agree. It's got to be a mutual agreement. And that agreement has to be voluntary, and that voluntary has to be based on truthful,
factual information. I cannot tell you the house has 104 bedrooms and lie to you to get you to sign the purchase agreement. It is not a meeting of the minds then. It's not mutual. Uh, yeah, it's not a mutual ascension. Both parties have to voluntarily agree. Legally competent parties, we've talked about that. Got to be 18 in the state of Indiana or an emancipated minor can't actually do that. Got to be a sufficient mental capacity. If you think back about the Simon case and the case of uh, Anna Nicole Smith, where the old man changed his will, remember? We talked about that. And the son came forward and said, hey, wait a minute. My dad was on painkillers. And Cameron, this speaks to your point. My dad was on painkillers and not in his right mind when he wrote that codicil. So therefore that contract is voidable because it looked valid, but his mental capacity was not there. So therefore we want that contract undone, which would revert or rescind back to the original will. In, and in the original will, left me the money, all right? So that's how that whole thing plays out now that you understand contracts and recensions and all of that. And voidable, those contracts were deemed voidable. Hey, right. Remy, you mentioned something about emancipation or the state of Indiana. Can you say that again? If a person is legally emancipated by a court, mm -hmm. they are deemed to be a, of age of majority. Okay. So if a 17 year old is emancipated by court, he is then could enter into a contract because he's a legal majority adult. They won't emancipate a minor, so to speak. Now that contract gets formed. It then must be discharged. And there are various ways to discharge a contract. Hopefully, the main one that you will run into is called completion. You will complete the contract, i.e. sell the house, and complete it. But there are some other things that are required in the performance of the contract. Here is another term that is often misunderstood and misquoted by people. It is called time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. This is a legal term that means there is a limited or finite amount of time in which this contract must be fully executed. You cannot keep going on this contract forever. So the key that I'm telling you is this, time is of the essence, has everything to do with the completion of the contract, not the formation. There are people all the time that said, well, I made them an offer and I gave them till Sunday at seven to answer. Time is of the essence. Dude, that has nothing to do with this. That is the time to respond. Time is of the essence is that date in the contract or in the offer that we say we will close by May the 30th. Time is of the essence. What that is telling you is we have to complete the contract. We have to be fully executed by May the 30th. If we go past May the 30th, then this contract is no longer valid. We have to have a deadline 
to complete the contract. Think of it this way. Suppose I wrote you an offer and said, hey, my guy's going to pay you a uh, full price for your house. And he's got to get his loan. Um, he's got to get his credit worked on. So give him a little bit to get his credit worked on. And three years later, I call you back and go, hey, dude, he's still working on his credit. So we're about ready to close. You guys see the problem? You don't want to be held up three years. So you would say, after May the 30th, if your guy cannot get his credit worked on fixed, get the loan and close, we are going a separate direction with another buyer. All right. So time is of the essence is the deadline for the contract to be completed. And once that deadline passes, the parties are not, no longer obligated to each other. And one party or the other may be subject to a lawsuit. You said you would complete the sale by May the 30th and you didn't. I am now suing you under specific performance. And that's how I got paid without a deal closing. All right. So time is of the essence has everything to do with the completion of the contract, not the formation of the contract. The formation is just the deadline that I've given you to answer. Here's our offer. Respond by tomorrow at six o'clock. In the offer, one of those terms are we will close by May the 30th. Time is of the essence, which means we are bound by that date. So quick question to put this in a smaller scenario. Say if you're the pizza guy says they're gonna be there in 15 minutes. But the 15 minutes goes by, can you sue them for like that specific time thing you were talking about? Is that like yeah, a actually, you know that Cameron, <laughs> there's this thing that they call the letter of the law, and then there's a thing called the spirit of the law. <laughs> no, that's seriously, that's two different items. Under the letter of the law, if they failed to perform in their time frame, then yeah. in theory, they are in violation of their contract. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, could you, in the spirit of the law, probably would never get to court because the judge would look at it and say, settle this outside by yourself because I'm not taking up the court's time for this. All right? So now the question comes about when they arrive, which maybe, <laughs> think of it, maybe that's why they took your payment when you ordered, because mm -hmm. now they get there in 17 minutes instead of 15. Are you really going to go, <laughs> I want my money back and I'm not taking that pizza? Or are you going to go, I'll go ahead and take the pizza, thank you. And I think you pizza the place and I'm never going to order from you again. That's possible. Okay, so what about for a car, for example? Say they're going to have a car ready by this date, but, um, I don't know, like engine problems occurred and they can't meet the de that deadline. What about that scenario? It's a little bit more of a price gap now. I will tell you my standard statement is I am not a practicing, practicing attorney. attorney. Yeah. Okay. All right. So do I'm not, sure. I did not take the bar. So I'm telling you now, I cannot offer you legal advice. Okay. All right. I do know that the judge will, if there is no time is of the essence statement in a contract, the judge will put one in based upon normal, what was the word they used? Normal traditional standards. Like, pizza he wouldn't say that's an eight day time is of the essence because that makes no sense for a pizza but 12 hours also may not be for the return of your car that's getting body shot so if you don't state it the judge can put it in there based on i can't remember the words but basically it's what's 
what's common in an ordinary practice for an industry. So 30, 40 days for closing of real estate, three years is not acceptable in the closing of real estate. All right. 